Yeah, I'll tell you, somebody that I used to respect a tremendous deal in professional wrestling was Chris Jericho. I, I certainly did, right? Even for those of you that go back to when we were the old Off the Rope show back in the early 2000 teens, I sat there, one of the posters I had on the back wall was of who? It was Chris Jericho. And there were like posters back there of what Austin, Mankind, The Rock, like that was the type of status that I put him on, right? Not in terms of he wasn't a star the level of an Austin or a Rock, but in terms of as a performer, what he meant to the business, I respected the hell out of Chris Jericho. Because here's a guy that could work. Here's a guy that could talk. Here's a guy that had great versatility as a character and a performer. He could be equally effective as a babyface and a villain and a heel. And sometimes villain and heel can be a little different. Um, he could do it all. He really could. And I can think of just how many times he was involved in interesting angles, entertaining promo segments, matches, you name it. Like, what wasn't there to like about Chris Jericho? And especially when you got away from the ring and he would do interviews, you felt like he was one of those guys that wasn't just towing the company line for WWE all those years. He was a guy that you felt like was giving it to you straight, at least to some degree. He was a guy that you actually wanted to hear talk about the business because he would be open and honest about things and you would get some good intel. If you remember way back when him and Edge talking about on the podcast, how John Cena had it in his mind what they wanted to do at SummerSlam 2010 and how those two guys were adamantly against it and tried to talk him out of that shit. And Cena did Cena things and it fucking sucked. And Cena came af to him afterwards and said, I was wrong. Well, it's too fucking late now. But that's the type of shit you used to get from Jericho, right? Like this was a guy I respected tremendously. And even when the news came out that he was going to join AEW and he was going to be, you know, not just a performer, but somebody with some power behind the scenes, my, my initial reaction was great. Tony Khan and AEW, the other EVP clown, they're going to need somebody like Jericho that knows what the fuck he's doing, that could command respect from others. A guy that's been there, done that. He's done it on the biggest stage. You need that kind of ballast, that kind of steadying, calming force. And when he was made the first champion of AEW, the first world champion, I'm like, that makes sense. He's at the time the biggest name, most recognizable name that you got. He's going to bring you instant credibility to your championship. And as a consequence, your brand, you have to do it. But over the past few years since AEW came into fold, it is amazing to watch how much my respect for Chris Jericho has just. And some are going to say, well, is that political reasons because he's conservative and his wife is? Not really, because let's be real, there's a lot of wrestlers that are conservative or moderate where I don't align with them politically. That doesn't necessarily impact my ability to respect them or admire their work or be a fan of them. Like, that's kind of a dumb way to do it. Yes, I think a lot of his worldviews are fucking dumb. I think his wife is a insurrectionist psycho, but at the end of the day, he gives a fuck. Like, too many people care, pretend to care way too much about politics and none of that shit's going to change. It's like an old George Carlin uh, segment talking about how you have this illusion of freedom. You don't. Your own. Everything is bought and paid for. Because that's right. Um, so it's, it's not that. It's certainly, let me put it this way. It is not a predominant overriding theme of why I should lose, have lost respect the past few years for Chris Jericho. It's just everything involving this asshole since he's went to AEW. Like somebody could be getting some real momentum as a character. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, he's having too much fun. He's doing too well. We got to get Chris Jericho in there so that way he could suck all the life force out of their fucking character. So that way Chris Jericho continued to be relevant. When I look at Chris Jericho Russell now in his 50s, he's so fucking out of shape. He looks like a... F How in the fuck... Does he look both flat and fat at the same time? 
He looks like a flat, fat, dad bod John Bon Jovi in not a complimentary way. Like, how the fuck does that happen? Like, if you're going to continue to do that, at least make yourself somewhat presentable. I realize you're older. I'm not expecting you to have a six pack or anything else, but don't look like one of the fat slobs in the fucking crowd. If I wanted to watch, pay money to watch one of the fat slobs in the crowd grab the mic and then wrestle, I would pay money to one of the fat slobs in the crowd to do that. A little bit of the bubble. You know, I could deal with the dorky fans of AEW singing along. Judas and shut the fuck up. But Chris Jericho has sucked the joy out of so many angles, so many characters. And then it's all the other shit. This guy drunk tweeting at 4 a.m. on Christmas Day, talking about NDAs, and then when he gets called out on it, he does what Chris Jericho always does, which is be a bitch about it because that's what a bitch does. And he is a bitch. He totally, completely is a bitch. Then you hear things about the same guy that once punked out and fucked up, choked out Goldberg backstage is now getting his shit rocked allegedly by MVP on his own cruise a few fucking years ago. And you just see the way he conducts himself online, the way he has become this shill for AEW, the way he has become this fucking mark, the way that he has become just so many of the bad things that you thought he didn't represent. You know, a guy that went from fucking jobbing it to a Fandango to the point where he was jobbing too damn much because he was too damn unselfish, now he's become selfish again. And then you start hearing the reports like a Nick Houseman talking about, oh, the what about the NDAs that you make others sign? <laughs> I mean, that's what Nick Houseman said. Whether there's truth to that or not, I don't know. But, you know, there have been plenty of reports over the years about Chris Jericho and his dalliances outside of his marriage, so no wonder what his wife's probably probably protesting so much on January 6th. Um, because he's out there doing other things with other ladies. Um, but, like at some point in time, <laughs> you know, where there's smoke, there's fire, and you'd probably start to hear more reports, and then, you know, the fact that his shit becomes a big thing, and he made himself the focal point. He made himself the story right before AEW's pay-per-view, whatever the hell it was called, World's End or whatever. Like, it's just everything involving Jericho. The Mark mindset and the Mark mentality and the Mark actions that he's demonstrating, I expect the irrational, emotionally unbalanced AEW fan base segment to sit there and demonstrate the behavior that Chris Jericho is doing to a much grander scale with a much larger platform. You know, there is something to the never meet your heroes because you'll be disappointed. There's something to know when to get out because you hang around too long. You could go from the, being the hero to the villain. And while I've never met Chris Jericho, so he doesn't fall into that first one. He certainly, to me, falls into the second one. He went from being somebody that I really respected and I really admired and was a fan of to now in 2024. If I happen to see him on television, if I happen to see a YouTube clip of him talking about anything recently involving wrestling, it's an immediate non-starter for me. It's an immediate click. Click away. Because there is nothing appealing about this dude anymore. He's a glory hog, he's an egomaniac, he's a whiny bitch, he is all those things, and allegedly, potentially, a lot more. So, at this point, frankly, like, even if you like AEW, why in the hell would you have any respect left for Chris Jericho whatsoever? Because I know I sure the hell don't, and you really shouldn't either.